Well, folks, I figured you guys would probably want to see this thing. It's pretty much, pretty much done. The only thing that we really got left to do is, um, is uh, he wants the oil on the transmission change and new filters put in it before he, he's got 700 ton of hay to move right now. And he says, let's just get it changed that way. You know, I'll run it and I'll, we'll get all this hay moved. And basically, he's got a load 700 ton. He's got 50 or 60 loads that he's got to haul to a dairy down south. And uh, this thing will be stationed at that barn with that 700 ton load in the truck every day. But, um, and he said after that, he's going to probably go have it painted and everything. But so, as you can see here, I. <laughs> Okay, this plate here, this plate used to be over here, and this one used to be over there. And the reason that I did what I did here and swapped them is because there was an access panel right here. I don't remember what that access panel was originally for, but it was something to do with the manual transmission over here, which we don't need anymore. And the reason I did that is because I had to fabricate a fill tube for the automatic transmission. I still haven't, I've got to put the bolts in this plate. But I manufactured my own fill tube. There it is right there. And I had to cut the dipstick and weld it to length. There that is. So that all turned out really good. So I um, figured you'd like to at least say, see it work. To, uh, I had to go in and adjust the reliefs on the uh, on the valve body because I was I put a gauge on it because it seemed like it still wasn't fast enough and it was only at 1400 psi and you should be looking around 2750 on an open center hydraulic system and for some reason something in this dash leaks air until it gets about above 30 psi then it quits leaking he said it's always done that but i gotta label these i got a labeling gun i should have brought it with me today but i forgot about it i gotta label these this is your pto that's your pto this is your highway work switch this is your fan switch it over You gotta think backwards when you're on this side. You actually push reverse to go this way. Say you'd want to load a truck and you could, I don't know what, uh, I, you know, that's another thing, another thing that we haven't done. pad over here is dead turn your pto off now you're on highway side and that keypad's dead see it won't do anything
sounds really good too. The only thing that is not done like it should be is the speedometer because I don't have, I looked and looked and looked on his rear end and I don't, I set the revs per mile for the tire size, but I, and with the, in the ECM, but I don't, I can't find the gear ratio tag on that rear end. So I left him a message. Uh, but, uh, yeah, guys, I tell you what, uh, this has been a go around here now. After every, every project after this is easy. Let's put it that way. And I got another one in the shop already. I'm not even done with this one. And I got another one coming after that. Well, it's supposed to be here in the next couple of days, but I ain't going to get to it for a while. Chris Mott's truck. Um, anyway. So let's go look at that real quick. Um... Oh, the head is finally done on, well, I shouldn't say finally, they only had it a week. If it was Klamath Falls, a machine shop in Klamath Falls, you might get it back in three months. That's after you threatened to kill them. Okay, let's walk through the gigantic garbage pile of shit laying everywhere in my disastrous of a shop because all I ever do is run from one project to the next. Scramble, scramble, scramble. Um, okay, let's start out with this customer that's a YouTube viewer down south somewhere. I think down by Sacramento somewhere, maybe. Uh, really nice truck. But, as you can see, so he took it to a shop, and I don't know, they had it for like a year or something like that. Which, I mean, okay, I had the squeeze probably a good nine months. I did. But you know what? It's done, and it's done right. It's not scabbed together. Uh, this... So they took a CM871 out because he got the letter from the air board, from the commies at CARB. He got the letter saying he couldn't run it anymore. So he opted... Uh, he opted to put an X15 in it. So he bought an X15 engine, which... This is easy, guys, because all these retrofits that I've done... I didn't take a, a like for like engine. The CM871 and the and the X15 are going to mount up. You don't have to change anything. You don't you don't your fan, the radiator, dis, none of that shit changes. It's all the same. Basically, you just unbolt it and it bolts back in. So this guy called me, and he says, uh, "Really nice guy." Uh, he said, "Hey, uh, they've had the truck for a year, and they said all they've got left is seven codes." That's what he told me, you know, and. And I, I believe that's what they were telling him. Um, anyway, uh, I was under the impression that if it only had seven codes left, then obviously they got it running. So he said, well, can you take care of the seven codes? He said, we'll haul it to you. And I said, sure, that's fine. That should be easy money. Seven codes, I wouldn't even probably bring it in the shop. I'd probably just do it right out where you dropped it. And uh, anyway, he... He called me like the next couple days or something. He said the shop that had it was going to haul it up here. I thought that was a little bit odd. I said, sure, that's fine. Whatever, whatever way you want to haul it up here, I don't care, you know. And so anyways, they dropped it and I wasn't here. And I, I showed up and me and my wife, we actually got it in the shop. And I lifted the hood up on it. And this is what I saw. Let me get my light on my phone. Oh, there goes the phone. I'm just determined to finish this thing off by dropping it all the time. Look at this. Look at the disaster, guys. We've got our work cut out for us now. We, 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 so, look at that disaster. And I'm not, I'm not sure what they're even trying to accomplish there. They had everything they needed to do, the job, right here. Anyway, so, um, all that shit there has got to be done away with, and now it all has to be done right and soldered together. 
and I don't know if I should be buying a whole nother harness now. I'm not certain what I should be doing there. <laughs> and it almost looks like they bought a new harness. That is a new harness, and they they totally wrecked it. <laughs> I don't I don't understand what they were trying to do there. That that is an OEM harness. I don't know why. Anyway, I mean, what the hell? I mean, they got insulation cut or wire nuts. Uh, so the other thing I saw was I looked and all the fuel ports are wide open. So obviously it's not running because the fuel system hasn't been plumbed. Um, I just happened to look back here and I saw daylight and there's no transmission in it. Um, so, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that has to be done now here. Um, so I walked over here and... I looked at the DPF SCR, and it's not even mounted. It's just ratchet strapped on there. So I'm looking at this. This so there's a saddle here, and there should be straps that go up and strap this assembly to the saddle, and they're not here. There's the exhaust isn't hooked up to the inlet side of the DPF or the outlet of the SCR. So, you know, I mean, it, I, I had to call him and tell him, hey, you know, I, I don't want to get you in a beef with those guys, but I don't know who's telling who what, but I'm just telling you what I see. And there's a whole lot of work to do here, man, a whole lot of work, you know. So, but like I said before, this is easy. This is easy money compared to that damn hay squeeze out there. Easy, easy money. So... It's a lot of shit going on, guys. I've got, and I'll have to start. I'll have to start putting some videos out. I sure appreciate some of the people that donate money to me. Uh, you're very gracious, and I very much appreciate it. Everything helps this day and age. Uh, so I got that to do next. You know, I got another one coming too. That Chris Mott's got a low boy truck down in Irica, and I know Chris put the X15 in, and he he hooked up everything he could. And I know Chris pretty he didn't cannibalize everything. Anyway. Um, I've got this one here. I started making a video on it. I got the auxiliary section that I got to rebuild on the transmission, which reminds me. And I was going to keep going on that today and try to get something done on it. But I forgot to order the stupid. Uh, I forgot to order this gear. Your splitter comes in on one side, and then your synchronizer comes in on the other side for high range. And the teeth are worn out on it, so I, I forgot. To, I just didn't. I got everything. But that, and what happened on this is the friction material is gone on the high side of the rain synchronizer. So, um, I got all the parts over here for that. Right here. So, I, I, I got a rain synchronizer, I got output shaft, got a fork, I got the main auxiliary dry, uh, auxiliary uh it's your main bearing on your tail shaft up on the auxiliary and then this is the output counter shaft bearings four of those gaskets i got the rain cylinder and the splitter cylinder reseal kits but anyway um then we got to get to working on these cats and then i got a 6170r sitting down there on the other end of the cellar that i had to put in the cellar down there that they were chopping with and it's got the gigantic turf tires on it for when they chop strawberry plants and they were 13 feet wide and I couldn't get it in the door so me and my wife drug it in there on the cellar end and I'm gonna have to work on that in the daylight so I can see and uh, it dropped a valve or something so anyway I got my hands full as usual nothing new oh that's right I gotta turn the battery disconnect off on this thing I don't like leaving that on if you got one, use it, you know. And I just plugged into it a minute ago, and there's no codes in the ECM, and I've drove it around quite a bit, so. But yeah, we just got to dump the oil and transmission and put filters in it and, and uh, refill it, and then uh, it's going to go load trucks. So anyways, I thought you guys would like to see that and uh, some kind of resolution to that whole thing, so. Anyways, I'll be back next week, and I'll, I promise I'll start, I just, between, oh, so, 
this is part of the reason I haven't done any videos. I've been so swamped after the haying got done. Now they're harvesting strawberries. Now they're harvesting onions. Now they're harvesting potatoes. And it's all I can do during a weekday to keep up with the harvesting crews. And then try to do this stuff in the shop too. So I had a cab over. Potato guys over there had a cab over truck. And fan belts. It spun the fan belts. And I'd already put a set of fan belts on it la this summer sometime. And when I was there this summer, and the reason the fan belts are going out on it is because he's got a massive leak from the front crankshaft seal and the the um, the accessory drive bearings on that N14 Cummins are going bad, and it's leaking oil out of there too. So I get over there to do the fan belts, and I'm looking at the cab cylinder. Here's the cab cylinder. It's a cab over, right? So how, how do you do that? How in the hell do you do that? I just, I don't get it, man. I just really don't get it. I had to raise the cab up with my crane. And then I, the owner was over there working on one of the bulkers. And I said, hey, come over and look at this, Mark. And he goes, what the hell? How the hell did they do that? I said, you got me, man. I don't know how you pretzel a, a cab lift owner. I mean, it just goes up and it goes straight down. I mean, so then I got the cab down, guys. And... That thing was probably two inches, three inches away, shifted to one side, because I think it might have bent the hinges on the cab, where it hinges down. So then I had to take, I got it down far enough to where I could get a bottle jack between the cylinder head on the engine and the cab, and I put a two by four in there to put some more surface area on it, so I didn't smash it in. And I took a 12 ton bottle jack, and I had to, I had to push the whole cab over from the back and get it to where it would line up with the cab locks when I let it down. Unbelievable. Some of the shit you see is just unreal. So anyways, guys, um, not much of a repair video, just uh, blathering away. So I promise uh, early next week we'll start hammering out some videos on some of all this gargantuan pile of shit we got to work on here.